Hi, this is Michael Carvajal, and you're watching True School Sports. Take care. Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is my recap slash official post fight review of Sebastian Fandura versus Carlos Ocampo. And uh, Sebastian Fandura, the, the towering inferno, he's done it again. He maintains his undefeated record. He beats Carlos Ocampo by unanimous decision. And I got to say, it was, uh, it was a good fight. A little bit surprised. I don't think this fight is necessarily what fans wanted. But I think it's what Sebastian Fandura's career ultimately needed. You know, um, he's coming off a fight with Eric Slubin that was an absolute war. Fight of the year, most likely, in my opinion. Best fight of the year thus far. Um, and not every fight is going to be like the Eric Slubin fight. And if you want longevity in this game, especially being a guy who's six foot six in the uh, 154 pound division, you know, I think using the gifts that God gave you and using that long, lanky frame uh, in boxing would be a great benefit to him. And that's what he did against Carlos Ocampo. You know, you saw Sebastian Fandura through the first three rounds uh, working that long, stiff southpaw jab on Carlos Ocampo. Um, then he kind of got back to doing what he what he normally does in the middle rounds, and uh, there was more uh, exchanges, there was more uh, fireworks, there was more banging, you know, as far as uh, being in that pocket. But uh, credit to Carlos Ocampo, you know, a lot of people, uh, I, I don't think anybody really pick, anybody picked him to win the fight, but with Carlos Ocampo, uh, most people were expecting him to get stopped, to get folded up like a blue steel chair, and uh, he, he pushed Sebastian Fandura for 12 hard rounds so it was a it was a clear win but there were a lot of close rounds for support uh, in this fight i think uh conditioning and the fact that you know really ocampo pretty much you know for lack of a better term he shot his load off earlier in the fight and you saw like there wasn't a whole lot of steam on his punches so he he stayed in the fight through sheer determination uh in the back half of the fight but it was just mainly arm punches and it wasn't anything that was going to get Sebastian Fedora's attention and Fedora was pr pretty much able to pick his shots move and maneuver and do what he wanted to do and, and so you know I, I think he, he got a valuable a lot of valuable rounds tonight boxing and using that long frame of his because I feel like if he's going to beat the Charlos and the Tim Zoos and the top guys in this weight class moving forward yes he can still be the towering in front of and have those wars when 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 it, they need be but i think it would be a much greater benefit to him to use that long uh, frame of his uh, to his advantage so that's what it was as far as ocampo is concerned i think he can hold his head high because years ago when ocampo fought earl spence i mean we we, we didn't even get a chance to know who ocampo was he he got knocked out in one round and he was cannon fought opposition but you know credit to him he spent the last three years and some change almost four years um building himself up at 154 he, he's won 12 fights um to get to, the, to get to this point and then when, when, when the lights came on he didn't win the fight but i think he did enough tonight to make himself a, a viable option uh, as an opponent for other 54 pounders in the future you know um he was game he was tough he he, he didn't he didn't quit when things got difficult or, or hard for him and he even early in the fight he was even able to land some big shots of his own he the best thing he did in this fight was when um sometimes he would take his left hook and he would literally cock that shit back and you kind of disguise left hook and then he would kind of loop it like the way he was throwing it was landing on Fandura a good amount of time so um he did some good things in this fight and I think for him if you're part of his team there's some things that O'Campbell can take and learn from this but uh yeah for, 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 for Fandura it's another win in the bank um, that will conclude his 2022. So he concludes his 2022 with uh, a fight of the year candidate with Lubin and then a, a, and then a viable learning experience boxing against Carlos Ocampo. So he'll, he finishes 2-0 with one knockout on the year. And it's a great uh, a, a moment in the career of Sebastian Mandura. Um, you know, he, they asked him about will he fight the winner of Tim Zhu versus Charlo later on in the year. Uh, he said that pretty much he's WBC mandatory and he's going to be waiting on that fight next. So listen, the... The unfortunate thing about Fandura is I, I, I don't think Samson uh, Lukowitz, his manager, Samson Boxing, is going is gonna to allow him to fight. So we probably won't even see Sebastian Fandura until like the middle of next year. I'm talking like April, 
May, June, because if um, Charlo is going to fight Zhu in January, um, I don't think Samson's going to risk uh, their, that ranking position in the WBC uh, just to keep Sebastian Fedora active. Uh, he'll have Sebastian Fedora sit on that WBC mandatory position. He'll fight probably nobody. And um, at the best, he'll fight Charlo, you know, between April and June of next year. So that's what it is. But uh, hopefully they can find him a good stay busy fight and keep him active, keep him sharp. Because uh, activity, match fitness, and timing are the most important things for a fighter in their development. And uh, there is still some development with Sebastian Medora to be had. But listen, overall, good performance. Good, crazy performance from Ocampo. He exceeded expectations tonight. And, and he definitely earned himself some... Um, some more opportunities in the future for, for, for Fandora. Um, not what the fans wanted, but I think what he needed. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, my, that's, that's my thoughts on the fight. Y'all can give me yours down below. Uh, what did you make of the fight? What did you make of Ocampo, Ocampo's performance? Leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniels. So until next time, take your eyes. True school sports, the untouchable. the untouchable. Don't forget it. Hey. Up and coming. Ready to make noise in the boxing world. Already he's making noise, but soon to make even bigger noise. Hey, this is my guy right here. Yes, sir. He's, he's the top, one of the top guys in the biz. Been a friend of mine for years. He's a friend without boxing. He's definitely a friend in boxing. So uh, thank you, Sean, for talking to Guys like Brennan that really love and soak up the game keep me hungry. Keep me, keep me reminding of what's important in this sport. You know, uh, loving the, not, not even just loving the fighters, just studying the fighters. Yeah. And knowing the fight game. So much love to my man. True school. He is a true one. Absolutely. What's good? It's your boy, BT. Hello <laughs> to the thousands of True School Sports followers. That's right. The untouchable True School Sports Empire. E